So this is still ranting Saturdays. Let me get some water for this one. Okay. About this fuck before. Anybody say, well, people need to mind their business. Why you in my business? Why you stalking? And you need to look up stalking. Look up the definition of stalking. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. This and that. Anything you put out here in the public is everybody business there. I just want to get that up there. But I want to talk about this fuckery that went on. On Instagram, about these how these women was fighting over this one dude. Let me tell you a little bit something, something about this dude. Um, I dated him for a short time, okay, and you know who I'm talking about there because I know you're trolling. Hello, welcome. But let me tell you something about why I left that nigga alone. He couldn't wait until the last day when that security firm lost their contract and it was about to be a new company that, you know, security company to take over, whatever like that. You remember that, right? That nigga couldn't wait to come to my house. Now that was around, let's see, I got my calendar here. The last day was on the 31st. That was a Thursday. As you can see, this is the 2001 calendar. That was on a Thursday. That nigga pop up at my house on a Friday on the 1st. Let me go to Friday, June 1st. Okay. That's when I, that's when I got laid off from that security firm. All right. I don't know if you can see that. Let me make sure you can see. Make sure you can see. June 1st. That's when that nigga popped up at my house. Okay. Talking about you. You know who you is. Um, he couldn't wait to talk about you. First thing that came out of his mouth. Now, I don't know how the fuck he knew. I was about to leave my house. Because when we, you know, the last account that we had, he told me to, you know, he changed his number. To lose. Basically, he tried to tell me to go kick rocks and he don't really want to deal with me no more. And I say, that's cool. Because guess what? I didn't want to deal with you either. So, you know, we had sex and said our goodbyes and that was it. Now, that was, you know, that was what, about 99? Now, this 2001. He's dating you. Why the fuck that nigga popping up my, my fucking house? Couldn't wait to talk about you. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. He come crawling out his old, his black car, his black Ford, whatever. With his bald, shiny head. It was a sunny day. I'm on my way, minding my business, coming down. I, before I even got to my bottom step of my home. He come jump hopping out his motherfucking car. Because he was parked in front of the neighbors. um, Right across over here. In front of my neighbor's house. But our driveway is like right, used to be right there. Kid ain't mom, cause you were supposedly pregnant then. Y'all, old girl tripping. That baby ain't mom. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. What? What? What are you telling me for? You need to go talk, work that shit out with her. Child, he was telling me shit. Um. Oh, you know she be, cause this nigga he. He runs, he tells, I'm going to call him Mr. Mr. You, 
okay? Mr. You. Because you full of shit. Mr. You got a habit of running his motherfucking mouth quick and chaos and confusion among women. Because honestly, I don't think he really liked women. Not saying he gay. But I don't think he liked women too much, especially black women, because he did tell me once upon a time that he started dating white girls because he was sick of black women. I'm just telling you what he told me. So he's going on to say, yeah, you know, she be asking me questions about you. We supposed to be, to be together. And she's asking me, oh, did she ever suck your dick? She, he, bitch, it in my name. I said, what? Why is she talking about me? Y'all supposed to be together. He like, yeah, I know. He talked about your motherfucking ass. To me. And now in 2017, he's still doing that bullshit. Anyway, that's why I, I, I bye. And then that other uh, high yellow fucking bitch, the one that looked like that fat head bitch motherfucker. That fat head nigga you call a beastie. Oh, bestie. Did I say beast? Got the nerve to say, I want him back. Hell, motherfucking no. Nah. And I'm going to tell you why, bitch. I'm going to tell you why. Because I ain't never really get, got this out here like that. Only my best friend. I'm going to tell you why I left that nigga alone in the moment. But let me get on to that day. That, that uh, June 1st, 2001. On a Friday, okay, he talking about you. I say, hey, look, I'm on my way to go up the street to the diner. I got to get stuff for my dad and myself, you know, to eat. He, want, he said, he's like, no, nah, I'm going to take you. I says, I'll take you. I could literally walk up there. He wanted to take me there so he could talk, sit in his car so he could tell you to talk about your motherfucking ass. He talked about some, oh, you still fucking your son, um, father. That kid ain't his, blah, blah, blah. I said, yo, you got to talk that out with her. That's your girl. I still don't understand why you were at my house. I guess he was fishing for information or some shit like that. Why you were at my house talking to me? Then something came out about some pictures of your son father. We get to the diner. Next thing you know, he on the phone with you. Tell my son. You remember that. Because I heard what you said. You said the bitch is lying. You said it loud enough. I heard you through that phone. He said, yo, I'm with her right now. I'm going to have to look that out. But. Uh, this, that, this, that, and other. He started talking about, you know, I guess he was trying to set her up. He was playing the both of us, really. You was like, oh, the bitch is lying, the bitch is lying, this and that. I'm telling y'all what happened. When we were still working on the job, right, some people that I was working with and some of my homegirls was telling me, oh, you know, she was showing naked pictures of her son father. I thought he might, he found out about it. So it like, it came out. So he was discussing that with her on the phone. He said, the bitch is lying. He said, how can I lie about something that whole everybody, what everybody seen? One thing about this chick, she lies. You lie, sweetie, you lie. You lie to my best friend. You was going around saying you going to smack her. And then when she confront you, when she was about that life, you bitched up and say, I didn't say that. Then you turned around, you then you turned around and told her you ain't never had a problem with her. It was me you had a problem with because I was going around telling people that everyone's jealous of my friend, which that was a fucking lie. All you do is lie, bitch. So y'all, y'all good for each other. Anyway. So that's what basically was going down. He was telling me he wanted to take me to Summer Jam. Remember Summer Jam was 
let me see, it was June 30th on a Saturday, Summer Jam. was like, oh, I'm going to take you to Summer Jam and this and that. Then I'm like, cool. I thought we was on, like, good terms. I didn't want him back or nothing. But, you know, I thought we left on friendly terms. But that, I still was weary about this motherfucker. I was still a little shaky about him because I didn't like what he pulled at the diner or what he was pulling at that. So the following, uh, the next, I think a few days later, whatever like that, I was going to hang out with my girl. And he pops up again. He always popping up at my house uninvited. I didn't invite you. He pops up again because his, I guess he's a drifter. You know, he always staying between his mama house and his cousin house and his big mama house and then back to his mama house. And from what I hear, he's still a drifter. He still don't have a pot to piss in or when to throw it out of. You know, a bum. So, um, let me think. He came by my house there. And um, I was like, no, nah, I'm waiting on my girl. You know that same girl you call yourself trying to claim you going to smack? Why you want to slap her? Because your man, because, because. Mr. It, Mr. You at the time wanted to school her huh? and told you about it because you know he got a big fucking mouth. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's why you want to smack her. But anyway, so he came out of my house. He was like, you know, what you doing? Can we go say he was trying to fuck? Why he's still with you, honey? Why he's still with you? Because he did all that rah rah rah. That baby ain't mine. But why he's still with you? And then from what I hear, he was still with his baby mama. He was with his baby mama when he was dating, too. He was just, he put it as, oh, I just go over there to watch my son while she go to work. Yeah, okay, he was with her. But um, he trying to fuck. Now, my dad wasn't home. He trying to go upstairs and fuck. I said, no, I ain't trying to fuck you. I'm going to go, you know, hang out with my girls. We, we, we'll we talk later, right? But we did kiss, though. I shouldn't even fuck kiss his ass. We did kiss that day. So I went on with my girlfriend. He went on whatever the fuck he went on. Next thing you know, I come back home later on that evening. I called, his, I called Mr. You number. This motherfucker tells me the um don't call my phone no more. I can't talk to you no more. I said, but you asked me to call you. Don't call me no more. I can't talk to you no more. And I hear her, you there. You know who you are. I hear you in the background coaching him with the fucking set. So I said, oh, I know what this is. I said, well, bye. Like, nigga, you came over my motherfucking house. I don't like you like that. I only said hi to you to be friendly. I don't like you. And I'm going to get to that later. Okay. So she coaching him and shit like that. I said, oh, okay. So... Anyway, I knew my some knowing his personality. Oh, and then let me tell you something. He kept calling me after that. Remember, he said, I can't talk to you no more. He calls me and called me a liar. Say I lied on on you there. Then he turned around, called me at 12 midnight a couple of days later and said he just left Kizzy house. And I put two and two together and said he just loved Kizzy's house. That's another co-worker he used to, um, I used to work with. You know Kizzy, right? He calls me up, telling me he loved Kizzy house. I put, and this, keep in mind, it's like 12 midnight. I put two and two together. I don't know why he used to like to call me late at night. I guess it's his work schedule or something like that. I put two and two together. I said, oh, he fucking See, I ain't stupid. I say, oh, he fucking her. Why would he leave his girlfriend friend's house? Oh, he fucking her. Okay. Oh, you was right. And I want to apologize to you 
You know what I told that motherfucker? Since Miss Fathead bitch wanna say I want him back. That's who I laughed at her at. I told that motherfucker, okay, you said what you had to say. I said what I had to say, so stop calling me. Click. What that retarded motherfucker do after that? Because that nigga got some mental issues. I'm glad I love him alone and ain't push no babies by his ass. I'm going to get to that later because I'm going to let it all loose here. Um, after that, he calls me two weeks later. It's something about these two weeks. He calls me two weeks later from his job. You know, his job will not allow him to bring cell phones. What you doing? This is before 9-11 happened. What you doing? What you? I'm, I'm eating breakfast. What you eating? I say, I say, what do you want, Mister You? What do you want? Don't you got to work? Don't you got um baggage to go sling on the fucking plane? What do you want? Damn, why you being mean? I just want to make up to you and say I'm sorry. I say, okay, you say you sorry. Goodbye. Click. Why this nigga pop up? This nigga even pop up at my house even after I worked at FedEx. I worked at FedEx in December. The nigga was still coming to my house. Why? That's your man. And the nigga was still popping up at my house. And from what I hear, I hear he was still with his son mother at the time. Empty way. So, let me backtrack on when we dated and why i really had to leave that motherfucker alone we dated a couple times we had you know he had he's the type of person he could be charming he could be nice but then he could just go the fuck off he one of them motherfuckers that you know you gotta walk on eggshells with him with his ass you don't i don't know if he got a bipolar imbalance and some type of imbalance in his brain. But something's definitely off. And I know. I grew up around that shit. I knew. I ain't no doctor. But I grew up around that shit. And I knew something was off my, about this nigga. Okay. Child. What made me not really want to have sex with his ass. For one. When he used to say he fucked strippers and shit. And another thing is, he was like, we was we was doing our thing, right? Like, we was at our house, my house, and you know, we was having sex. We just got finished. This motherfucker was like, "Yo, you should let me hit it." Well, I said, "Hell no." He said, "Why? What, what's the problem?" I said, "No, you can't hit it wrong." And what scared me a little bit was, because I'm a little paranoid. I was fucking, I'm that chick that would sit there and reach there and make sure the condom is still on. And give him a little massage, massage on the penis and make sure that condom's on because I don't trust that shit. Okay, especially him. That's a sneaky motherfucker. That's one of the motherfuckers that like to slip condoms off and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the last time we did something, he took the condom off and he kind of, you know, came on my butt. So... Then he hit me with the, ooh, I want to hit it wall. Your pussy felt good. No. Uh-uh. No. That's when I, I was like, it was too many red flags with this motherfucker. The scary part was now, there was one incident when we left the motel with um, the loop. Everybody know the loop. That's the spot. Everybody know the loop in New Jersey. That's the spot. Okay, the loop was full. So we went to another hotel on one and nine. That was like the second best hotel, right? So yeah, the loop, the loop got that jacuzzi in here. What? They got them rooms with the jacuzzi. I was in the um the sweetheart room and I was in the room with the that looked like the Roman. They had the Roman theme with the motherfucking what? The the the, the hot tub in the in the middle of the oh my god. Anyway, everybody on the loop. So, um, yeah, so, we leaving the hotel, 
and this nigga, Mr. You, picks a fight. He start arguing with these Hispanic people, these Hispanic guys. <sighs> I stayed in the car because I'm like, now Mr. You always brags about how he got a car in the trunk and shit, and he got a tattoo of a gun on his forearm, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And he showed me his bullet wound where he got shot. You know, he tried to be, he act like he Tupac or something. He think he's some type of little thug. And he always bragged that he got a gun in his tr- in trunk of his car. I never seen it though, but he always bragged he, he does. I, I really thought he did because this motherfucker was crazy, right? So, um, He's like arguing with these people, and I'm like, oh my god. He gets in the car, and you know, I don't like to get in the car with somebody when they upset. I'm about to call a motherfucking cat. See, I don't like going nowhere with no money. Girls, when you go anywhere with some motherfucker, don't ever go with no fucking money when you could be stranded anywhere. You have at least, at least enough money to get somewhere where you catch bus home, okay, or to get some enough for some cat there. You don't fucking go out there with no fucking money. What's wrong with you? These niggas are crazy. They'll leave you somewhere and have you stranded. Anyway, but he ain't do that to me. Because, you know, I was... Anyway, I know what your mother live at too, motherfucker. And you don't live far from me. You don't want to do that to me, boy. See, I'm that chick that was raised with a dad. And he carry guns too. He's a southern boy. Play with it. Anyway, he know that. He met my father. He know he don't fucking play. Oh, you didn't know that, dear? He he met my dad. Anyway. So, he get in the car. He upset with me. Because he think I supposed to just get out there and cuss them out, too. And, oh, he used to brag about how... Because for some reason, I could get men to open up to me and tell me shit. And this nigga, he's a loose mouth. He just opened up. He just opened up a lot of shit to me. So he used to brag about how he would fuck like, like different like women in his work area on a rent and get them to fight each other. And he's doing this in 2000 motherfucking 17. And it's like, I'm kind of chuckling, but it's sad because it's children involved. That's the saddest part. It's not, it's not funny when it's kids involved. And you got the mothers acting like jackasses. I'm just saying. But, what was I on here? He used to brag about having girl, women fight with him. He, he don't been with, I don't know, God knows, I don't know, shit like that. I don't know. Because he was working, Mr. You been working at the airport for years, probably longer than me. Because he used to say, oh, I used to see you around. I was a little shy to talk to you, approach you. You know, you so pretty and this and that. And I was like, that. oh, I know he was talking shit about me, though. When he used to come through the work and used to be on that arch and stuff, I knew he was talking shit about my weight and shit like that. I knew. That nigga used to play on my phone. You know, he's Jamaican, but he's that Jamaican that grew up up here. So you can't tell us he's Jamaican. He used to speak in his patois voice. That's what I got that. Um, my ex, whatever video parody, he used to speak in Patois, in the Jamaican language, and call me all kinds of fat bitches and shit. And and the the nigga was too stupid. He was so dumb. This one time he got caught. He called me from his son's mother house, and it was on the caller ID. That's when I knew it was him. I suspected it was him, but the nigga forgot to block his number, you jackass. Anyway, but let me tell you what really scared the shit out of me. Now, this was the time when we was was still sick dating. We dated a short time, maybe two months. I don't know. Like, it was a few months. 
not leave him alone. Okay. This is what really scared the shit out of me. He claimed he got his. Oh, yeah, I remember when I helped him. He, you know, we was together. He went to his mama's house. And he accidentally locked his son. You know, his son, he had a cute little boy. He's probably an adult now. He should be grown now. But, oh, boy, he got a cute little son. Oh, he claimed that. He trying to say that that, that wasn't his son either. He trying to he trying to see where that wasn't his son. He got a habit of doing that. Oh, that ain't my child. This ain't my child. He has a bad habit of doing that. He try to say, "Oh, you know, I got my some of my boys don't believe that that's my son." I say, "Well, did you get a blood test? If you're not sure." He try to say he don't look like him, child. He's a mess. Okay, he try to see where that wasn't his son. He asked me like the son in the car, and I went down the block to get the police to get help. And the police, you know, popped the lock and stuff like that. He claimed he was so appreciative to me. I saved him, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you don't act like it, motherfucker. I was the one that got the cops to get your son out of there. Thank God he wasn't crying or nothing. He was a good little boy. He was a good little boy. He, you know, he wasn't crying or anything like that. He wasn't panicking. He was just chilling. So, um, but what really scared the shit out of me, though, was when he got his car towed in Brooklyn and called himself trying to buy some New Jordans or some shit in New York. And New York, though, they do not play, honey. They will tow your car like that. Okay, because when we went over there, they was still towing motherfucking cars over there. They do not play with the parking. He come, he calls me from Penn Station. He crying like a little bitch. Tell out he need cannot um he needs to go get his car from Brooklyn and can I come down there and meet him? I'm halfway asleep, so I go down there. I drive down there to Penn Station. And I said, you're going to have to drive because I don't know my way to New York. So he takes over. He drives my car. And we get halfway across the Pulaski Bridge on our way to Brooklyn. And he says, wow, you just came out here? And, and you know, you just came out here without thought, huh? Just to help me? He was like, what if, what if, um... I kidnap you and nobody never see you again. I could I could have been I could be plotting to kidnap you. I looked at him like I didn't say that because this motherfucker was driving. And I was like I just was quiet. I said, I don't know. I was scared. I was like, damn, is this motherfucker gonna kidnap me? Thank God it wasn't the case. Thank God. His car was actually towed. Went to the impound in Brooklyn over in Best Best Stylist near the motherfucking project. And I'm looking around I'm like, oh damn. Then I had to think, oh my God, I gotta get back home. He said, nah, follow me. This and that, but finally made it back home. He wanted to take me out to dinner that night, but I was so fucking tired. I said, I just wanna go home and get some rest. I guess he was he ain't like that shit. <coughs> he act like he was so appreciative. Fuck that nigga. Um, he gave me a few. He gave me eight buddy pass. That's it. And I had to get him money for that. I remember when he asked, we went to the mall. And he wanted this game. And I went back to the mall and got it for him. And then he took it back. He came by my house for the receipt and took it back. He said it was something. Claiming it was something wrong with it. Yeah, I think he went back to get the money. Now I think about it. Is that why you call me gullible? Because I actually have a heart. See, there's, yeah, it's some level of gullibleness, but that's only to motherfuckers like you and him that like to step all over people. Like, you know, good people that actually want to help you and have a heart. 
So I guess that's why I'm supposed to be gullible. That's what he told you there. Because everything you were shooting, now you don't really know me like that. Neither that fat head bitch. You know, that rose going down that dike. You call her friend her. She don't know a motherfucking thing about me. She might think she do, but she don't. And the, and the sad thing is, I ain't had nothing against you with me. I ain't had nothing against you with me. But oh well. Now, that's my truth on that motherfucker. You can take it or leave it, whether you believe it or not. I really don't give a fuck. Because at the end of the day, this is my blog, and this is my life, and this is my truth. Bye.